SCP-3444-3 opens onto some form of open area within a city, ordinarily a marketplace or plaza. This area is usually brightly lit, and often elicits positive emotions of satisfaction or joy in the subject. A variety of SCP-3444-9 instances are present, often greeting the subject in a friendly fashion and offering to do business with them. The subject will feel compelled to walk across the area, often wandering into shops and conversing with the locals, before returning to SCP-3444-1. Please consult Experiment Log 3444-12 for more information. Experiment Log 3444-12, Section 3 Subject, D2072 a female from Chicago, Illinois, convicted of the first-degree murder of Mrs. Valerie Jacobson, the wife of John Jacobson, with whom she had been having an affair. D-2072 was noted to be an aficionado of the noir genre. Of particular note is the apparent absence of the effects of SCP-8900-X once SCP-3444-1 left SCP-3444. Summary of Prior Silver Events At SCP-3444-2, Origins. The station opened onto a small country farm, with a farmhouse approximately 50 meters away from SCP-3444-2. The aesthetic of both farm and farmhouse were reminiscent of rural Illinois in the late 1940s. The SCP-3444-9-A instance, apparently a copy of D-2072's father, spoke in an accent and cadence reminiscent of 1940s Illinois. It became apparent in the subsequent silver events that the entirety of the golden event was set during the 1940s. SCP-3444-9-A implored D-2072 not to return to Chicago, and to stay as a farmer. D-2072 angrily rebuffed this advice, stating that she had nothing to fear. Begin Log D-2072 exits SCP-3444-3. The environs she enters appears as a precise recreation of Haymarket Square, Chicago, in the early part of the 20th century, but significantly cleaner and containing significantly happier people. The weather is clear. SCP-8900-X is still not active. Alright, D-2072. You still with us? If so, please head to the- Chicago, 1946. It'd been a long time since I'd been here last, but I didn't miss a single thing about it. The money, the whores, the booze. This city was a den of vice and whiskey. And just my kind of town. What? D-2072, is that you? No, boss. I don't- On the surface, it looked nice. Pretty streets, gleaming surfaces. But I know that beneath its surface was the same scum. The same filth that shot and killed for just another fistful of dollars. I swore I was done with this game, swore I'd stay out of it, go home, be a model daughter, but that's just not me. Every time I try to leave, it just keeps pulling me back, and this time it was a seven foot piece of meat and muscle called John Jacobson. What? John? What the- For God's sake, it's running a noir film. What is this, some Murphy Law shit again? <sighs> Look. D-2072, if you're still with us, just try to interview some of the people around you, okay? Ask them about their lives, where they came from, how they got here. And try to ignore the voice. It's just drawing from your own life. It's trying to make a narrative. Um, okay, boss. Gotcha. D-2072 approaches a young boy, apparently around 10 years of age. Uh, okay, listen, kid. I don't know if you know anything or not, but I've heard that there's some bad stuff going on this side of town. I need an informer. What do you say? I'll pay you a dollar a week. God damn it, we've lost her. I thought we were really holding on this time. Alright, switching to observation mode. Aw oh, shucks, miss! That sounds like a real good plan! Just make it two dollars and we got a deal! The kid was smart. Too smart. I could see it in his eyes. He'd seen too much for too short a life. Give him a few years and he'd end up just like me. Too damn stubborn. Too damn idealistic. He'd soon learn that ideals were for fools and liars. This isn't even good noir. Who wrote this? Done. And if I want you to tell someone, you tell them, okay? Gotcha, miss! Chicago. 
It might seem sunny and fantastic on the outside, but I knew it better than anyone. Capone might be gone, but the city was still alive and kicking with the mud and misery. And I was just a two-bit dame caught up in the middle of it all. D-2072 enters a gun shop. Hello, Henry. A male SCP-3444-9 instance in his late 40s, sporting a large handlebar mustache, is behind the counter. D-2072. Well, I never. Didn't the guy ever see you again? It's just D now, Henry. Easy to replace on my door sign when it gets shot off. You got a lot of nerve showing up here again after the Friar Boys framed you for murder. Hey, Henry, you know me. I like to flirt with danger. Give me a magnum. I've got a score to settle. Anything for you, D. The shopkeeper instance exchanges a 357 magnum for a series of crumpled dollar bills. D2072 stashes the magnum in a pocket before heading for the door. Be seeing you, Henry. Try to look out for yourself. D2072 leaves the shop. You see, I wasn't just anyone. I was D2072, private eye. There was money and opportunity to be made here for anyone with a gun and a face like mine. And I was there for anyone with cash in hand and a sob story to make me cry. D2072 walks back to SCP-3444-3. The electric lights lighting the square begin to go out as she does so, until the square is completely dark. End log. Summary of subsequent silver events. At SCP-3444-4, Hardship, the station opened onto a small office in a tower block, apparently owned by D-2072. A male SCP-3444-9 instance resembling John Jacobson entered the office, and hired D-2072 to investigate the murder of his wife. D-2072 discussed various monetary and illegal concerns with the Jacobson instance, before returning to SCP-3444-4. The voiceover instance present at SCP-3444-3 continued to vocalize, describing the Jacobson instance as trouble, and making objectifying comments about him as he came into the room. At SCP-3444-5, First Sight, the station opened onto a bar, apparently in a back street of downtown Chicago. SCP-3444-9-B was working as a barman, and spent much of the silver event flirting with D-2072. The voiceover instance commented on the quality of the bar, the personalities of the SCP-3444-9 instances serving as the clientele, and engaged in objectification of SCP-3444-9-B. At SCP-3444-6, Big Break, the station opened onto a small apartment in downtown Chicago. D-2072 immediately began looking for clues. Eventually, D-2072 found fingerprints on a kettle, which she claimed proved that Jacobson was the killer. The voiceover instance was not present in this silver event. At SCP-3444-7, Love, the station opened onto a small motel on the outskirts of Chicago. D-2072 checked into the hotel, before being joined by SCP-3444-9-B. The pair engaged in sexual intercourse, before discussing existentialist and nihilist philosophy while smoking cigarettes. The voiceover instance was not present in this silver event. At SCP-3444-8, Climax. The station opened onto Haymarket Square again. The weather, however, had changed from a clear sky to heavy rain. D-2072 confronted the Jacobson instance in the street, who confessed to his wife's murder. D-2072 shot the Jacobson instance, killing him. The voiceover instance then expressed regret at the turn things had been forced to take, before ruminating on the effect which life in Chicago has on human nature. At SCP-3444 Second Manifestation, Wake Up, the voiceover instance summarized the events of the Golden Event, and expressed a hope that one day, D-2072 would be exonerated. Note, D-2072 was subsequently exonerated, following a retrial which featured new evidence. John Jacobson was subsequently convicted of the murder. It was discovered that the police had purposefully covered up DNA evidence found on a kettle in the Jacobson's house in order to implicate D-2072.